What comes to your mind when you think about worms? Some of you might think of it as bird food. Some of you might think about gummiwurma. And probably most of you will think, ugh. Well, I use worms to study human brain diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. This is C. elegans. It's a worm, and it's much simpler than humans. It doesn't have a skeleton, it doesn't have a heart, but it also doesn't have a brain. So how can we study human brain diseases in a brainless worm? As we grow old, we start to accumulate protein aggregates in our brain, and they look like this. When we have too many of this in our brain, this can actually destroy our capacity to move and our capacity to memorize. The amazing thing is that C. elegans, even though it doesn't have a brain, we actually can mimic protein aggregation in worms. We share about 80% of our proteins with worms, which means that many biological processes are controlled in the same way by the same proteins. So there is this experiment I do, which is called the motility test. Essentially, what I do is I need to measure the number of times the worms bend their body like this. So it's like a little dance. When worms are young, they are healthy and they're very active, and they don't have proteins in their body. So they will be very active and they will move very quickly, and I will count one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Now, when the worms become old, they start to accumulate protein aggregates in their body. And this will be a problem because this will make them move much less, and I will count one, two, three. This experiment that I just described you, it's actually used by biotechnology companies to screen for drugs that reduce protein aggregation and improve the worm's ability to dance. In the future, such drugs could be used to finding treatments and improve the lives of patients with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. So, as you can see, worms are so much more than bird food or gummi verma. And I hope you agree with me that of all things, such a small, insignificant worm, which doesn't even have a brain, could be the key to finding treatments for human brain diseases. Thank you.